landscape photos are my favorite to take because you have blue skies, clouds, this time of year is the fall colors and um, like just like this one here, the blue sky, leaves and the road. I love this photo. I, I have it scanned in, so I have it digitally, but these photos are pretty old. Maybe I shouldn't say that about myself, <laughs> but um, it's my, these pictures are from Charleston, like my favorite spot to camp. Haven't camped there in a really, really long time, but um, my name is Amanda Farlinger with From Where I Stamp near Kingston, Ontario, Canada, and Charleston Lake is really close to Kingston. And I help busy women scrapbook their memories using stamps, ink, and paper. Um, now, I want to make sure that I scrapbook the photos I want. And there is a whole bunch here from um, our fall trip. This probably is a Thanksgiving that um, we went and stayed at Charleston Lake. We take our 27 and a half foot travel trailer and we park it at the campground for the weekend. And I think at least I think most weekends we cooked a turkey in the in the camper, um, but I can't remember. Um, but today we're going to look at making a scrapbook layout using a scrapbook layout sketch. And last week we talked about scrapbooking Thanksgiving photos and talked about photos that we take every year. And so October, we're, I'm talking about autumn. This is my favorite time of year, the, the fall colors. The cooler temperatures it's it's like the perfect time of year for me um so <laughs> these photos are from 90 1997 and um they're with i took them with um just a point and shoot camera with um film and i it was a hard time picking photos i was going to try to do these road ones these road photos but i decided to go with three landscape photos so these ones here from a trail and because they fit the page a little better so we're going to use a um, scrapbook sketch this one here layout sketch number three and if you go to subscribe from where i stamp.ca it is a freebie you get three scrapbook sketches that you can use to create your own layouts and today we're going to modify sketch number three to do landscape photos three of them instead of two portrait photos. So you can take sketches and modify them, use the base and just change it up to what you need. All right. So in the mini catalog, the, what is it? September to December mini catalog. Of course, a lot of it is Christmas. There is some fall things in there. Last week, um, we used all about autumn designer series paper at least if I'm remembering correctly. I'll have that link to the video below for you if you if you missed last week's video. And next week, I haven't decided on the designer series paper yet, but we will be doing photos of garden. And so I'll, I'll show the stamp set at the end. All right, so we're going to use the Joy of Christmas designer series paper today. And you might be going Christmas paper for like fall Thanksgiving, but I want you to look at these patterns. So we have wood grain, we have music notes, you could use the red, and you could use the green. So there's pecan, what is the colors? Pecan pie. And I love this about designer paper right on the pack, it tells you the colors. So we have cherry cobbler, old olive. Oh, that's old olive. Oh, I guess it's in with the, uh, the leaves here because th this here is shaded spruce. So old olive, pecan pie, pebbled path, which is one of my favorite in colors, real red and shaded spruce. So you wouldn't think that Christmas paper you could use for Thanksgiving or for fall, but we're going to do that today. So I'm going to prove that you can. All right, I've already done my journaling, so that way we can just get right into creating this layout. So I've cut up some pages. So we're starting with this um I don't know if it's actual music on here and I I think I have it facing the proper way. And then I have this wood grain, this wood grain. So this is pecan pie. These are pebbled path. This is white with real red. So you can see kind of the Christmassy colors. So you could use this inspiration for some Christmas colors if you wanted. All right, we're gonna do some gluing together and then we're gonna do some stamping. And we're gonna use some watercolor um, techniques. So it's, what's the paper called? What did I do with the paper? Ah, it's hiding underneath my 
card sketch or uh, scrapbook sketches. All right. So it's a Fluid 100 watercolor paper. And I love putting it in our stamp cases. So you can buy a pack. I think it's four. And I love storing things in there. All right. We'll put some of this glue down on this one. And I cut it so that way the wood grain was going two dif different directions. You see this one is going vertical and this one's going horizontal. So that way they weren't going to, to me, they wouldn't get clash. So if you want to do it a different way, you can switch this one to horizontal and this one to vertical. I had to think there for a moment. All right, so now we're going to put this. See, this would be a beautiful Christmas layout. And I cut some of the things a little bit big, but if you're not sure what the dimensions are, go to subscribe from where I stamp .ca and um, you'll get the tutorial with all the measurements. So that way you can come back to this video and scrap along with me. And we're going to do something like this. Here we go. So I'm doing this a little different. This is wider. This is taller. I think six and a half inches. So take a sketch, change it up, depending. I didn't want a lot of this music um, design to show through. I really wanted this, but I didn't want this to be covered over because this is such a big layer here. So this part in here is so big. I didn't want to cover up that beautiful, beautiful design. All right. So we're going to do some stamping. So I'm going to put this off to the side for a moment. And I've already have some that are dry. I'm going to show you my techniques and we're going to do some die cutting too. So we started, or I started with a piece of the Fluid 100 paper. And then I grabbed three different, this one's pretty old. <laughs> Cajun Craze has been around for a while. So Pecan Pie, Mossy Meadow, and Cajun Craze are the three inks that I'm using today. And I've used just oops, a clear block and put some on there. So we have our inks. And then I grabbed our water painters. So these come in three, oops, three different sizes. So there's the small, medium, and the extra large paintbrush. And you fill the reservoir with water. So then there's this push here. And you just push down here. Let me see if I get this closer to the camera. Push down and the water comes out. So then you can use that to color in. Or in this case, I've done like a wash. And I've put some, um, you can't really see it because it's white on white, but it's um, the adhesive sheets on the back. Because we're going to do some die cutting. Okay. Where's my dice? Oh, yes. So we are using the Forever Forest Bundle. So this is also in that mini catalog. And although they are pine trees, and pine trees do not, or at least they look like pine trees, they don't change color. I've decided they're going to change color this year. And, I mean, it it could be a silhouette of a different type of tree. It, it You just use our imaginations. And no one's going to, no one's going to comment. So we have the stamp and cut emboss mini machine here. It's a three and a half inches wide platform. And I think if I've done this correctly, I should be able to get two cutouts of this one piece. So all I've done is just use different oh, watercolor paper is thicker. So it does take a little bit more to put through. So I've just added some extra water to the ink and then put that on the paper. So then we're just going to leave that right there. And we're going to, come on, we're going to put, we're going to do it like side by each, but bottom, bottom. So the, the trunk is there and the trunk is here. So that way we can get two out of it. Come on. Oh, I better move that over so it actually cuts. All right. Come on, all the way through. There we go. 
And I love this just folds up and it takes up so much less space. All right. So now I can put my die back. And there's a bunch of different dies that you can do this with. So there's some other little trees here. And uh, I mean, you could do a watercolor wash, stamp the bigger trees in black. So if you want to do like a sunset look, then you could stamp these over top with like maybe a dark blue, like Night of Navy or that mossy meadow or even uh, a black, uh, memento black. And then you can uh, die cut it out using this. Now, that does work in the mini. Okay. All right. So I'm going to put these off to the side for just a moment. Because we're going to need that die cutting machine. Excuse me. In a moment. All right. So there's our trees. There you can see them. We'll come back to that when we go to put the layout together. All right. Now, another technique, a watercolor technique that I was doing, or I decided to try, is grabbing, oops, that block is not big enough. This one here with this stamp, I'm just going to put it down. And this is where it becomes messy. So we need a big piece of paper. I used this on another paper where we made our own designer paper using the, uh, what was it called? La layering leaves. All right. This one, we're going to use two ink pads. We're going to use Cajun Craze and Pebbled Path on this. And what we want to do is I'm not, I'm not trying to get the, uh, what's the word I want? I want to say stems, but it's the, whatever they're called. I said it earlier, not trying to get the bark, the stems, the whatever they are, the stumps. I'm, I'm sure you, you, you know what I mean. So I'm just taking off the Cajun craze a little bit with a Kleenex. Then I'm going to come back through with Pebble Path in just this corner. And if I get the bottom of the tree, that's okay. And because this is the darker color, if it picks up a little bit of the uh, Cajun craze, it's not too huge of a problem. Now, you don't want, so these are our spritzers, and this just has water in it. You don't want to be too close, because if you're too close to it, then you get too much water. So you just, that's why I have this down, is we just want to spray down there. Let's see if I pick this up, can you see, can you see how watery it is? Kind of, sorta. All right, now we're gonna take our watercolor, our Fluid 100 watercolor paper, and we're just going to go like this, and smush it down, and see, I don't know if you can see the orange. You want to push it down. Then, whoops, you pull it up. That was a little too much water. So it's kind of orange. Can't really tell. But this will dry. So, oh, you can see here. When I, oops, let's move that out of the way. When I spritzed it, I got orange. You can't see. All right, it's a little dark in here today. So let's just put this off to the side. So I have another one that I have ready. I'm just going to make sure that I don't have any water on my table. So here I have one that's all dry, ready to go. You kind of can see the pebbled path. You kind of can't, but that's okay. But the water has given kind of um, a darker at the top and the bottom and a lighter part where there was extra water. So now we're going to cut that out with the dies because this is also going to go on our layout. So for this type of thing, it didn't take too long for it to dry, maybe half an hour. So if you're making a couple layouts, you can always start with the water, watercolor techniques first and then um, let them dry, go on to maybe another page and then come back. and finish up this page. That's what I would normally do. Okay. And then we have this die cut trees, watercolor trees, with 
adhesive sheet on the back ready to go for our layout. So let's put our layout together. Change, put a few things away. All right, so we have our base, which was, what was it called? The Joy, the Joy of Christmas Designer Series Paper. Before I decide where to put the trees, we're gonna look at the photos again. Okay, so I chose three different colors for the photo band, photo layers, photos mats, whichever, mossy meadow, pecan pie, and Cajun craze. And I picked them because this pulled the oranges out of the photo. This one pulled like the orangey brown from the photo. And this one pulled the green out of the out of the trees back here in the background. So it made this pop more for me. So we're gonna put this one up top, this one down the bottom, and this one we have dimensionals on the back. So it's going to go here. So now we can use, so I put the photos on the photo mats with stamp and seal. So just a little bit in the four corners of the photo. And then that way, if you need to take the photos out later for some reason, then you're able to do that. Okay. So we're going to put this one about here. And then we're going to put this one at the top about the same um, distance from the side. Or you can have it over. Maybe I'll put it over a little bit just to have them a little different. Oops. There we go. Before I put this one down, I wanna put my journaling. So I've designed it so that it will tuck under this one photo. So that way it's not just hanging out in space somewhere by itself. So don't wait too long to put it under the photo. There, you can see what I'm doing. So this way I won't cover it up with this one. So we'll just take off some of the dimensionals. Okay, like so, make sure I put the photo the right way up. Okay, make sure you can see this. And then I think I won't cover up the edge, but I'll come close. Oh, whoops, silly me. So, because this is going to be on photos, because you wanna make sure you can take the photos out later, if you want, I'm just gonna put these covers back on. I'm gonna take the center one off. So you can leave those on, and then this way they won't sit on the photos. So if you have to take these out later, you can. And it's gonna be in a page protector, so it's not too huge of a problem. Um, it's not like you have to have it really secure down. All right, so there we go. So this one here, now because this isn't an intricate one like this larger tree, you can, you could have, I could have just used the multi-purpose liquid glue, but it was just easy to put it down before I cut it out. So this one here, I'm gonna put on the pecan pie border. Oops. And like that. There we go. And this one. Are you gonna come off? Are you gonna make it hard for me? And don't rip. To make it a little difficult. Okay. Might have to get my tweezers out. Yep. All right. So as a reminder, the list of products that I'll use that I've used on this layout will be in the description below. So if you live in Canada and would like to place your order with me, that would be lovely. And uh oops. So the link below will take you to my blog. I got them stuck to my fingers. So that way you can find out more details about this layout and also to find the link to the products. Okay. 
So here's one tree. And then we're going to put the other tree on. Come on. Can I just pull you off? There we go. There we go. Okay. Come off my finger, but not on my layout, please. Okay. This one's a little funky. And because I cut them upside down from each other, they have a, a little bit different color going on. I'm going to overlap them just a little, like so. Now, this isn't going to be my title page, so I don't have a title on this page. So it's something that um, I'll probably take like one of those, those two road photos. Since I didn't like how they were looking with um, this layout, I figured I'll do something else with those and put like Charleston Lake stamped at the top. All right. So there is our layout using layout sketch number three from my um, three free scrapbook layout sketches. And you go to subscribe.fromwhereistamp.ca to get that. And as the link below will have um, where you can purchase the items. And then next week's video, we're going to use, at least the plan is to use the rustic crate stamp set and maybe the dies because I'll be scrapbooking photos of my vegetable garden from some year. I don't know. Got to print the photos. So we'll see you next Thursday. And I hope that you've enjoyed this and that you can scrap along with me. Have a good day.